All right, so uh, I think we're good to go. <laughs> so uh, hey, everyone, a very good evening to each one of you. Uh, this is Space Innova's live session, starting with Space System. And today amongst us, we have the remarkably amazing personality in the field of space sciences, especially uh, space system and satellites, Mr. Narayan Prasad. Uh, he is presently the Chief Operations Officer at Sat Search. He is also a partner with Space Park Kerala, uh, which is an initiative to build new space India in India and um, consisting of nano space park and space tech applications. So he's also the cur curator of New Space India, and he's also an advisory member of various space organizations such as Bellatrix and SEDS India. So uh, these are just a few among the various other positions that he holds. So on behalf of Space Innova, I extend a warm welcome to you, sir. And we're extremely elated to have you a part of Space Innova's live session. So thank you very much uh, for this uh, opportunity. And uh, it's always you know, uh, interesting and uh, yeah, uh, insightful to talk to, to young people and to see if uh, we can excite them to do more in space. So let me just, uh, you know, like uh, begin my uh, talk by uh, sharing a small presentation that I have, uh, which we could go through and then we can maybe jump into questions from uh, people. So are you able to see my screen now? Yeah? Uh, not yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, so uh, let me begin by, uh, you know, giving people an overview of um, how they can be involved in space, not just, uh, you know, first from a hobby front, from a front of uh, getting a sense of what they can do in space. You know, not uh, many people might be interested in building a career in uh, space itself. They may, they may be interested in other things as well. But, you know, if they still want to get involved in space, there's uh, many opportunities. But of course, you know, there are professional opportunities uh, that people can look out for. So I'll try to present uh, a uh, list of both things that people can do to be involved in the sector, right? Oh, sure. So just to give you an overview, I mean, what I do is uh, I run this company called SatSearch. Uh, we are basically um, a global marketplace for space. We, uh, as space engineers ourselves, we noticed that uh, there was no centralized uh, platform which people could use to find out who are the suppliers in the space industry, and I always used to ask this question to many of my colleagues here in Europe saying, tell me one supplier in India who you know who supplies to ISRO. And most often nobody knew, knew even one supplier in India for that matter. So then, you know, we sought out to uh, address this problem by building a platform. And today we have about 7,000, uh, you know, users every month accessing our services and about 2,000 suppliers who we work with. And just to that's just to give you an overview of what is uh, possible, even uh, you know, uh, if you have a small idea that you can invest some time on and try to build over time, right? So let's just uh, first begin by thinking about how space tech can be a, a hobby, and uh, through that hobby you can learn a little bit of tools and uh, a little bit of uh, you know passion towards the sector. And through that, you know, maybe you can explore any professional uh, opportunities as well. Uh, there are, uh, uh, this is also, you know, goes, the hobby itself uh, goes from anyone uh, who is, I don't know, like five years old to 100 years old, anybody can do this. So this is a setting uh, where you can explore a lot of things. So, uh, you know, of course, you know, a lot of things in space are very expensive. Uh, which means that, you know, building satellites and rockets is not for everyone. Not everybody has the resources to spend a lot of money uh, to be able to build satellites and rockets by themselves. But you can get involved in space in your own way. One of the cheapest things, if you are working with, uh, you know, um, schools, especially in rural areas or uh, people who uh, have don't have a lot of money but still want to learn a lot about how sa satellites and rockets work, is by uh, doing a lot of uh, paper-based models, uh, which uh, can tell a lot about you know, either the rockets or satellites or whatever. So if you go to this particular website, for example, uh, they have paper models for a lot of the space missions, including the Space Shuttle, the International Space Station. They even have it for uh, Indian rockets like PSLV, GSLV, and everything. 
So, you know, for this, uh, you'd only need a printer and you only need to download those open PDFs. They make the PDF documents openly available. So you can simply download the, the scale models. You can print them out to start assembling these models in 3D. And, uh, you know, essentially through that, you can explain to kids and uh, to young people how uh, really rockets work or satellites work and what are the parts, what is where, what is the function of all of this. So it's a very quick and easy way of doing it. So here's an example of a scaled model of the PSLV, for example. You know, in this case, you just need to print this out and then uh, you can explain to people, for example, you know, uh, where are the engines, what are the different parts of this rocket, uh, how do they, uh, what is the function that each part has, uh, what is really going on, uh, you know, why are the sizes of each thing very different from each other. So a lot of the basics of, uh, you know, what are the parts of a particular rocket or, you know, why it is built the way it is, those are some things that you can very easily explain you know, in, in this kind of a paper model setting. And uh, we know with this, you can uh, print a few hundred copies and have, you know, schools and colleges and uh, whoever wants to learn about rocketry as a basic introduction, rocketry 101 kind of a section to be done yeah. with some of them to, to move, right? Yeah. Uh, so let's look at, uh, you know, one of the innovations here. Uh, there's a young company uh, in Bangalore by a friend of mine called Divyanshu who launched this company to actually build, um, make model rockets accessible to, to uh, young people in India. So uh, basically, you know, model rockets are small rockets, uh, which have, uh, you know, very, uh, which, they, which can be flown to understand uh, rocketry principles. And you, it's a very big hobby in many other countries like the US and Europe, but uh, this doesn't have so much of an ecosystem in India. And so what, uh, you know, Divyanshu and his colleagues did is uh, they tried to build this ecosystem up in India by creating a company called uh, Rocketeers. And uh, they have been educating, I guess, now more than 50,000 students uh, in India uh, in how to build uh, model rockets and how it will be used and how it can be used. So this is a, a nice video from them that uh, shows, you know, how, how this uh, works. Uh, and uh, uh, so here, you know, they are showing a test firing of one of their uh, small uh, motors out there. So this becomes a very accessible tool for especially, you know, uh, schools and uh, to showcase, you know, the principles of rockets uh, in a more hands-on way. So as you see, you know, they are uh, kind of demonstrating how these uh, small, uh, you know, rockets work and uh, they are able to assemble these. And, you know, this is a very encouraging hobby. Uh, you, this is also something that you can do uh, in your own time. Not You don't need to even, uh, you don't just need to do it uh, from, uh, you know, a school or even at a personal level, you can do it because uh, today they have made some of these, uh, uh, you know, solid rocket motors available uh, through, uh, you know, their online shop as well. So you can just go buy some of the uh, online uh, from their web shop you can just go buy some of these solid rockets and uh, you can start to fly some of this uh, and uh, and so on so there's a very nice uh, you know uh, development in india in making solid rocket uh, sorry so making uh, model rockets available to uh, very uh, schools and colleges in india it's a very encouraging development that has happened uh, over the last uh, you know few years so uh, this is an example of uh, you know some of the uh, some of these model rockets available through the Rocketeer site, and I do encourage you go check it out. And if you are interested in uh, uh, you know uh, yeah using some of this and uh, you know experimenting for yourself, uh, that you go check it out. Uh, so there's uh, no, there's also another very interesting hobby that is uh, perhaps more than a hundred years old, uh, which is uh, using. Uh, ham radio for satellites. I mean, uh, ham radio itself is very old, but ham radio for satellites, of course, is uh, more recent as in in the last 50, 60 years. But ham radio itself has been a very old hobby beyond that uh, time. And what is interesting here is that um, India has a growing community of uh, uh, you know, ham radio licensed enthusiasts, and uh, uh, but basically, what you can do with this is uh, build these kinds of antennas, and uh, you know, build a, a community around you. 
uh, the whole phenomena of using you know mobile phones and landlines to speak to each other is very recent but imagine you know before mobile phones there was very little uh, you know uh, low cost techniques of uh, talking to each other so let's say you had to speak to somebody who is a friend in the us or friend in europe for example and you had to dial through landline or something uh, or even through mobiles for example a few years ago it used to be very expensive to make such a call and that's when you know ham radio was very very huge because uh, you could use uh, you know uh, these antennas to to connect uh, with people and to talk to them in a very low cost fashion because you had to you could even build these antennas by yourself by having a few strips of metal in place and uh, you could design the antenna by yourself so i encourage i will definitely encourage uh, people to check out uh, ham radio clubs in india there's many 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 uh, ham radio clubs uh, in every other city in india and uh, you can just go and enroll with them and uh, uh, getting a ham radio license is very easy uh, i think the cost uh, there's a, a test that you have to do up here for but it's a very pretty easy test and uh, it's a very low cost uh, uh, examination and once you get your license you can have your own uh, equipment where you can start testing by building your own antennas and uh and then equipment and uh, either talk to other people or in many cases you can also contact a lot of uh, satellites you can even contact the space station through through such antennas and uh, you know uh, link some of the data from there uh, so there is uh, this hobby for anybody who wants to do a little bit more hands on activity by getting involved in uh, electronics and uh, rf related uh, equipment so yeah this is a very interesting hobby as well uh the third thing that i wanted to highlight for we, you know that young people are uh, really interested a lot in uh, photography and one of the major uh, elements of photography that has evolved over the last few years is uh, astrophotography uh, which is basically trying to capture the night sky and uh, you know identifying the uh, different stars or, or you know sh shooting parts of the moon or uh, the milky way or anything so this can be done using uh, you know uh, digital slrs and different techniques uh, in capturing the night sky and experimenting with exposure timings and you know different out of sitting out of different places at different timelines to to capture the the sky and uh, this is one of the examples where you can see this uh, photographer has captured a very nice view of uh, uh, the uh, the milky way uh, and you can see the the rotation of the earth actually over time that uh, he has kind of uh, uh, captured uh, through through this uh, element so anybody who is kind of interested in uh, you know photography and want to combine that with uh, space uh, i suggest that you start experimenting uh, using different lenses and different exposure times and different equipment uh, in different locations to capture a lot of the uh, things around uh, yeah stars and galaxies uh so this uh, have also is a evolving community in india i know a few astrophotographers in india who are very passionate about capturing uh, you know the view uh, sitting out of india and uh, this is i think uh, a very evolving uh, hobby in india as well uh, you can of course you know try to build your own uh, telescopes and uh, and through that also start capturing a lot of uh, night sky that is also a possibility uh, where you can also experiment by building the optics around um so people who are also excited about uh, mining data uh, discovering new uh, bodies in the universe um, there's a lot of uh, buzz around uh, using uh, you know open source tools and open source data to be able to identify new objects uh, which have not been identified before especially you know things like asteroid hunting where you want to identify new uh, bodies that are flying around and uh, every year i think in india you have a lot of schools and colleges running these uh, kind of asteroid identification uh, programs and uh, you know this is one of the examples uh, called uh, astrometrica where uh, you can download this uh, particular uh, open source tool uh, it's available for free and you can start experimenting by uh, yeah like either you know locating new objects or loading loading different stars there and loading different uh, yeah, uh, objects in there to uh, do a little bit more on the data side of uh, astronomy
and uh, this can be interested for anybody who is uh, yeah interested in more of the data side and wants to link their interest in data with astronomy uh, as a as a hobby so and then of course you know there is a lot of uh, possibilities for people who are gamers uh, people who like playing games on their computer uh, and you know want to combine that with something uh, more space uh, i do encourage you go check out uh, kerbal space program so kerbal space program is uh, uh, you know an example where you can uh, build your own uh, uh, missions and the physics principles are very well integrated into this so in here for example this is one of the videos from uh, uh, from youtube on uh, one of the simulations from kerbal space program uh, where you know they're trying to build a mission to to mars i think with this it's a direct ascent uh, mission i think uh, where they're trying so in this uh, the very nice thing about kerbal, kerbal space program is that uh, you can actually the physics principles are very well laid out so uh, if you have you know uh, if you are building something uh, the physics principles have to work otherwise you know your mission won't really work on the program so it's a very good way of uh, experimenting by uh, you know building simulations of many rockets and satellites and it's something that you can learn about uh, you know what is the kind of thrust levels you have to generate to get to which places and what is the architecture of different missions uh, to be able to you know uh, deploy several other missions so this is a very very nice tool you can simulate a lot of things you can simulate uh, uh, it's a quite a heavy intense and you know the community around kerbal space program has evolved for many 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 years now so yeah i mean this is a very interesting and insightful tool for uh, somebody who is interested in more of a hands on uh, activity around gaming but uh, wants to get involved with most of the space related uh, uh, games that are out there uh, to learn a little bit more about space but also to have fun uh, by by having it uh, in a gamey kind of uh, environment so and you know that is more or less uh, what i wanted to talk about when it comes to getting involved uh, you know like as a hobby but uh, let me now talk about uh, what you can do if you want to be involved more uh, professionally in in the space sector um so as you know you know there are uh, many many of these new companies that are uh, emerging out of india over the last 10 years and uh, there's a lot of young people trying to build uh, new companies here's a list of them uh, where you can start uh, you know looking at any opportunities these startups uh, provide uh, for you uh, there are today about uh, maybe 50 new companies that have come up in the last 10 years uh, which are doing space related activities by either you know building satellites or launch vehicles or uh, or you know for example building uh, tools uh, or applications that use space related data or space related information so if you are looking to start your career Uh, by joining uh, one of the space related companies uh, you know you can uh, try to see if uh, some of these companies have opportunities that are relevant to your skill set and uh, and try to get uh, involved professionally with them uh, so but generally what i wanted to tell uh, you know through this uh, presentation is that the use of satellites is uh, mostly for uh, providing solutions that uh, uh, that can solve daily problems in the society you should not forget that uh, satellites are basically like tools like any other tools uh, where you use the tool to actually benefit from uh, what it provides you uh, so if you are using you know mobile phones to connect with your uh, peers to contact people to you know access different information you know book different tickets or something like that you are using it as a platform to solve some of the problems that you have on a daily basis and to make that more simpler for you to do it and uh, basically we should view satellites as uh, in the same light as well right so satellite data can be used by different uh, communities either in you know agriculture on fisheries or weather monitoring or disaster management or many other places to solve many problems uh, in a way that uh, has is is very challenging to solve without the use of them right so there is a large uh, possibilities of uh, you know coming up with such applications uh, in india and today you know the uh, the if you have if you see some of these problems today you can think of using uh, 
satellites as a tool to 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 solve those particular problems and especially in a country like india there's op- the opportunities are many very many because uh, there there's a lot of problems that you can address using uh, space and satellites so let me highlight a few things uh, which uh, which are very interesting uh, phenomena that are occurring you know in the next uh, few years that will occur and that are uh, today going on which you might be interested in knowing so uh, do you do know that uh, today you know internet is very uh, widely available in india and most people access internet in india in india through uh, you know uh, mobile networks but this mobile network is uh, very limited to uh, i mean it is limited to uh, cities and mostly first tier second tier third tier kind of cities but if you if you go to very rural areas today you might still not find uh, you know internet access to be very seamless and uh, the reason there is that uh, maybe these villages uh, they have uh, not many people living there uh, which makes sense for some of the telecom companies to put up their infrastructure in towers and other other uh, infrastructure to have a, a good amount of people using their network to make enough uh, profits which means that you know uh, almost all telecom networks will not reach out to villages that have let's say less than 1000 people or so on to place infrastructure there because uh, it will not be profitable for them to only provide services to let's say 1000 people when they have you know millions of people living in cities uh, who they can serve so which means that you know today in india you still have about 400 500 million people who are not connected to internet uh, because they their uh, reach to that is not available yeah so either if you are in uh, the islands of uh, andaman and uh, lakshadweep or you know you are in very remote villages it becomes very interesting if you can get uh, satellite broadband and uh, if you if you notice the recent news uh, airtel for example has uh, acquired a new satellite company called oneweb and is now trying to will try to provide uh, you know uh, satellite internet in india uh, through remote through this particular broadband and uh, even recently last week nelco one of the tata group companies has uh, uh, entered into a partnership with a canadian company called telesat to also explore this uh, avenue by trying to provide uh, you know rural broadband in india and there's a lot of uh, you know things that can go along with the rural broadband right because uh, if you provide rural broadband you also provide rural education uh, because you can connect those uh, schools to internet you can provide uh, hospital connectivity to them because uh, if you have machines that are uh, you know collecting data from patients there those patients don't need to come visit the cities uh, and they can only come to the cities if it is too serious otherwise you know a lot of the data can be seamlessly be transferred uh, through telemedicine to bigger hospitals where doctors can suggest if the patient needs to travel from a village to the city for uh, for a particular uh, you know serious operation or something but otherwise you know the the monitoring can happen through this uh, link itself you can also monitor a lot of uh, assets and uh, you know a lot of infrastructure remotely sitting out of anywhere uh, you know by having such uh, remote places uh, have you know infrastructure there or so on so you can imagine that there are a lot of uh, you know possibilities for you to uh, provide services on top if you have rural broadband uh, available so the second aspect uh, which is also very interesting which can which can uh, happen through space and satellites is uh, connectivity for uh, you know either if you are trekking in the himalayas or you are going into remote places where there is very little people and you are going there for hiking or tourism or whatever it is and you still you for sure you know you will not be able to connect with your family and friends through Uh, mobile phones there and you know you still want them to know that you are safe and uh, uh, and if you are in trouble you should be have a way of uh, messaging people so that you can get some help and so on and it's the same for people who are working in remote locations in oil rigs you know in high seas or shores uh, where there is a uh, very little opportunity for them to also uh, you know uh, have safety aspects covered or it could be you know try Uh, tracking some of your uh, old parents or you know people who who want support uh, all of these today present an opportunity where uh, satellites can provide the connectivity link by offering them small devices where they can carry it by uh, with them or they can they can be attached to their uh, suits or their equipment that they use so that you can uh, know where they are located uh, if they are safe 
and uh, it will also provide them the opportunity to uh, kind of indicate uh, if they are in trouble and uh, you can support them right so this is a very interesting avenue to explore as well yeah so we all know for example you know once you take off uh, from the skies uh, today uh, there's everybody you know ask you to switch off the phone while you while the aircraft takes off and uh, they will then ask you to switch on the mobile phone uh, once you are on the ground but today satellites uh, you know are connecting to aircrafts and uh, today you know you will see already in india uh, people are going to start providing uh, wireless uh, connectivity through satellite uh, from uh, air to aircrafts to provide inter internet connectivity on aircrafts so which means that you can still have your phone on uh, airplane mode but you can have the wireless on the cell phone on and connect to uh, through the airplane wifi uh, through to satellites and then still access and do your work so for example if you are flying from uh, trivandrum to delhi which is a 3 hour flight you can still be productive in in answering your emails and you know kind of doing some of your work uh, while you are flying uh, and you don't spend the 3 hours just switching off uh, from the world but you can still get some work done if you want to i mean of course you can uh, watch netflix or youtube or whatever it is if you want to and spend time uh, while uh, and also which means that you know entertainment will also become very personalized so you don't need to watch what is on the uh, airplane and they have a set uh, menu of things that you would want to watch in that if you are taking a long haul flight but you can watch whatever you want uh, through the internet uh, you know either if it is youtube or netflix or whatever you want to watch right so there's a lot of personalization of content through uh, that can happen is the same for uh, people who are traveling through cruise ships or ships uh, from one destination to the other there's also now a new concept called connected car uh, it's been a while. it's it's been there for a while but today people are thinking of uh, having antennas that go seamlessly with cars which can provide uh, you know direct satellite connectivity to cars and you can drive around places and this is a large part of this uh, you know people are thinking of uh, uh, you know having uh, even things like uh, uh, car maintenance and also for example autonomous uh, driving of cars all of that uh, through to be navigation through uh, both uh, you know gps on satellites as well as connectivity through satellites uh, to offer a various uh, services to cars as well so this is the first time where you see aircraft ships cars all of them you know trying to connect to satellites in uniquely new ways that can offer connectivity to them uh so you today you see many companies that are trying to enter um, you know the field of agriculture using space data and how they can be used uh, to provide more insights one of the nice examples i can give you from bangalore is uh, tata group has invested in uh, the indian institute of science to create a new uh, division there uh, which exclusively works on uh, you know providing uh, satellite um, uh, you know uh, imagery based insights to farmers so for example you know if a farmer is, has to grow this crop versus the other normally there are no such in insights that are available to farmers uh, to tell which crop to grow or which not to grow and they are uh, you know basically trying to talk to each other to see what are the market rates for what crops and what they can grow uh, to have more profits uh, rather than uh, use many scientific tools but for example you know this initiative by tata through uh, from nias uh, as a partnership with nias they are trying to create uh, an advisory service where farmers can know uh, you know which crop to grow this particular season so that uh, based on the the location the weather the soil conditions and everything they can get a much broader return than what they would get uh, otherwise right so this is a very interesting application but there's other other things that you can imagine that you can do with such uh, data and the whole idea is that uh, you use the space data in a way that it actually benefits the end users in this case it the end users are um, Uh, farmers so one of the companies uh, in 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 bangalore called satchar is also looking at uh, uh, linking uh, farm uh, you know related information to loans for example because today even today like uh, about 20 30% of the loans that farmers get are through uh, lenders who are informal lenders who charge very high interest rates and uh, the whole goal uh, is for government is to you know look at how banks can hand out loans to farmers in a more uh, uh, seamless way where farmers can get access to credit to be able to do their farm activity 
So this company, for example, has uh, uh, tried to automate the process of uh, you know the risk management for lending by taking uh, satellite data for farms for the last few years to know what is the weather risk, how productive those farms are, and to provide an advisory for uh, banks to know if a particular farmer uh, is a risky investment or you know if the farm uh, if the low, if the bank can give out loans to these farmers so that they can get easily access to credit and you know that uh, make sure that farmers get seamless access access to credit uh, in an easy fashion and uh, they don't need to rely on informal networks to get uh, money out of this right so uh, this is just one example in the agricultural sector. Uh, today, India has a lot of challenges uh, that you can look to solve uh, that include you know, air pollution, quality of water. There's a lot of problems with respect to climate change. There's a lot of problems related to energy. So you can look to identify which uh, problems that you would want to solve uh, you know, based on your own experiences, your own uh, you know, passion to solve a particular problem. And maybe, you know, there's an opportunity for you to use uh, space related data or satellite related data in the process to then, you know, solve that particular problem. So I would encourage you to, you know, keep an eye out as to you know, how, you know, you can use some of the space related uh, capabilities to solve some of these kinds of problems. And, uh, you know, maybe through that you can uh, contribute in your own way in uh, changing some of the things around you. The last thing that I will say before, uh, you know, I would like to take some questions is uh, I encourage you to check out uh, the New Space India podcast. It's a podcast that I've been running for the last uh, year and a half. And uh, uh, we have had guests from all the different startups that are trying to do, uh, you know, uh, new space kind of activity where they're trying to build their own satellites or rockets or applications and uh, we discuss a lot about uh, what are the challenges that they face and uh, how they have built their company or you know how uh, what are the problems they faced in the process and that might also lead you to uh, realizing a few uh, interesting uh, facts around their capabilities and uh, and you can also maybe learn from their experiences so you i do encourage you to you know uh, look at the new space india podcast and uh, you know, listen to some of these episodes. And uh, of course, you can also join the New Space India. We have a Telegram group of about a thousand people who are interested in space related activities. So if you want to stay connected to the network, uh, please, uh, you know, do join the New Space India Telegram group. And uh, so this is a link to the Telegram group. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, thank you so much for this uh, particular opportunity. And uh, I hope, you know, this uh, presentation was uh, useful for you in that sense and happy to take any questions from you that was wonderful so we got to learn so much in such a short span of time and across various uh, spectrums as in from hobby to professional and how agriculture can be improved especially in a country like india where 62 percent of the economy depends on agriculture i think those solutions that you provided and which you gave ideas that could probably be the upcoming solutions so that was really wonderful sir thank you so much for your insight so um we move on to questions sir yeah uh, Go on. yeah so uh firstly uh what do you exactly mean by the term space system and how has it come into the picture of space sciences oh uh, can you please repeat that again yeah what do you mean by the term space system and how mm -hmm. has it come into picture of space sciences? Yeah, I would say the space systems is a very, very, very broad term uh, because, you know, um, anything that you build, uh, there are basically three main things in any space mission. So what we call as uh, the, the space segment, the launch segment and the ground segment. So you can say all of these are space systems and they contribute to the success of an entire mission. Uh, so the space systems itself mean either a, a spacecraft or a payload that you will fly, and that has uh, that can include even human beings, for example, that you are carrying in a craft uh, to either orbit, uh, you know, the Earth, or uh, it could be even a spacecraft that you are going to send to Mars or Venus or or any other you know application that you have, or a, even a spy satellite or so on, right? So that's a space system. The launch. The launch-related systems are the spacecraft, or the rockets themselves. You know, they which they carry all of this, and the ground systems are 
basically anything that helps you communicate with the spacecraft or the rocket and can help you have this handshake between uh, you and the and the spacecraft on the rocket right so these are the three main uh, broad uh, systems that uh, you know put together a space mission so so essentially the the terminology is very broad but from a space science perspective it basically means that you are uh, you know either have uh, it could also include from a say space science perspective telescopes on the ground because today you know the the kind of telescopes that people are building are very complicated equipment in fact they may be more complicated than building satellites themselves because they have so many you know mirrors and you know rf equipment and antenna designs that are so intricate from each other and often the the larger the these kinds of radio telescopes or optical telescopes the money also becomes quite large in investment and the engineering behind it becomes also very very uh, complicated so so you can consider them as well i would consider them as well as uh, some sort of a space system but that is on the ground uh, but it could also be something like a hubble telescope where you have such a complicated machine that is out there and uh, today you have now the james webb telescope for example that yeah. people are building and that's going to launch so it could be something like that from a space uh, space science uh, perspective as well right so thank you so much and uh, so since we have so many uh, people and as in our viewers who belong to the student community the most often asked question is how important is one's educational background to venture into this uh, field of space sciences yeah in fact uh, a lot of people you know do ask have this question and uh, uh, to be very honest with you 90% of all the space related engineers uh, don't need to have space related background you know 90% of them come from traditional background you can be a software engineer you can be an electrical engineer you can be an electronics engineer you can be an instrumentation engineer you can be a mechanical engineer you can be a chemical engineer you can be whatever you know xyz engineer but basically space is just a way of uh, taking the engineering principles to apply it to the space environment by what that by what i mean is that basically if you are a mechanical engineer uh, you apply the principles that respect space for example you know your your rockets are producing you know some g level of uh, vibration so the structures you have to design to you know have to hold good for that uh, so if you are uh, let's say uh, an electronics engineer you need to make sure that uh, you know the uh, the components that you are selecting the, they can survive extreme environments either in heat or in cold uh, so all the things that uh, go on you know in in space systems there is only a very niche group of people who are involved in trajectory trajectory design they are involved in orbital design they are involved in uh, you know mission design of uh, how a particular mission happens if you are going through to mars or something where you are doing the trajectory and a lot of orbit kind of design astrodynamics aspects of all of this those are very core let's say space uh, background people but even there you know if you are a physicist you can very get, easily get involved you don't need to have uh, so as such you know there is nothing called for me there is nothing called really a space engineer it's basically an engineer who is doing something which is space related right so i think this is a very big misconception that uh, people have that uh, only if you study aerospace engineering or space engineering you can be a space engineer you can be a space engineer or a space uh, you know scientist or whatever by doing anything in space but by bringing your core skills uh, into this uh, into this uh, you know uh, into this profession and and you have to respect that uh, space brings those constraints and you just need to know what are those constraints that you have to operate in and by adopting your engineering principles to that particular constraint you are uh, becoming a space engineer that's mostly it okay thank you so much so absolutely you are very very well informed and i'm sure we have a lot to take back with that one question because most of students they get discouraged after a point when they get to know that you know they're not a part of aerospace or aeronautical world. so i think this should boost them up so also so how can students start with building their own mini satellites and uh, what is the procedure for the funding and platforms for the same 
Yeah, this is a very hot topic uh, in India because a lot of students I interact with, you know, they always keep saying uh, we want to build uh, these small satellites or CubeSats in our college and university. And uh, most often this is a topic um, where, uh, you know, the curriculum and the uh, set curriculum by the university does not involve, you know, satellites and space. So it's very hard to find the time or the resources uh, to for students to build such a mission. Uh, and it also becomes very difficult for university management to invest in such missions because they are not a part of a, a university curriculum uh, integrated in a way that uh, works uh, in grading and you know in uh, degrees and everything else. That's the main challenge around it. But uh, uh, I, you know, the uh, today CubeSats have become very low cost if you can build one of this. But I think uh, more than the technology, it's actually this management problem that you have with university curriculum that uh, you need to resolve because it uh, uh, the thing is uh, that there are some universities who are very well integrated uh, such work uh, you know where you can present work on a particular satellite as your bachelor thesis or you know your uh, internship or something like that right so that's where you know you university management have to change their attitude in a way that they look at uh, space and satellites as an avenue where students can get involved as internships or you know bachelor thesis uh, undergraduate thesis or master thesis or so on and there are some universities that have been able to do it uh, you know like iits uh, some of the iits have done it even some private uh, universities like tes and uh, nite in bangalore have been able to do some of that kind of activity so it's now you know it's a matter of uh, uh, being able to convince this uh, university management about this and in fact uh, in one of the uh, podcast episodes uh, which was you know a few weeks ago there was an episode with the new space india podcast with uh, sharan sharan is a good friend of mine who is a professor in the us uh, at a university and he himself you know runs a few cubesat programs there in the us and he often spends time every year uh, in india teaching students in india how to build cubesats and uh, in that particular episode me and sharan we have discussed for one hour on this topic of how do you help how do you have students build more cubesats in india and what are the challenges around cubesats uh, to for students in india so uh, for this uh, you know you i encourage you know listeners to, uh, people who are listening to this uh, you know uh, conversation to go check out that particular episode uh, where you can have sharan discuss a lot of intricate things around how students get, can get involved in cubesats and what are the opportunities for you there so definitely you know i encourage you to go check out that particular episode yeah and also so what is the future of satellites in india surrounding uh, privatization yeah i mean you see government has today announced a lot of new reforms uh, uh, that they will encourage uh, you know uh, private companies to come up and uh, build their own missions for the last uh, 60 years isro was the only organization in the country that uh, built satellites and rockets by itself but uh, you the younger generation are um, very lucky to see new companies come up in a way that you can get involved in them uh by you know involving yourself in the mission that they are building by either rockets or satellites companies like skyroot and agnikul are trying to build rockets uh you know bellatrix uh, kava space pixel all of them are trying to build spacecraft related technology or satellites themselves so it's a very exciting time to see new opportunities to come up there's at least uh, you know these companies have gone on to employ at least 500 people young people today uh, in the last few years to to join them in building those missions so these are very exciting new opportunities that was not there maybe 10 years ago for example uh, when i was looking for them uh, in india so so those are you know the changes that are very encouraging to see and that's why i came i brought this list together you know uh, in the beginning of my talk where you could so you know look at them but again you know the question there is uh, how do you approach them and uh, how do you make sure that you have the relevant skill set uh that that is useful for them because um, everybody wants to work in the space industry because it's uh, very interesting and very exciting but you also have to show the skills around uh you know the space related technology for you to attract their attention so and that's where you know the challenge is that you have to do some things that people are encouraged to see that you are capable enough so um 
in fact you know doing projects even around aerospace uh, by drones or even uh, high end automotive stuff you can prove a lot of things to these companies saying you have done a lot of hands on projects that involve very high end electronics or high end uh, coding or high end you know mechanical design or so on to prove that you know you are capable uh, to have to do something hands on in a way that is useful to these companies so i do recommend people who are not able to directly work on space related uh, projects to at least take up uh, uh, projects that involve high end engineering or high end uh, technology development because that is a different setting but that those principles directly go into space as well yeah uh, so so you mentioned about uh, students getting hands on experience and uh, you know getting there and doing it you know practically so in this time where we have a pandemic in the middle can you tell us how students would get those resources yeah i mean this is always a difficult time and uh, of course you know the, this is a very challenging to have uh, you know go into a lab and work together but that doesn't mean that there are no opportunities in fact i would say there are definitely opportunities uh, even if you for example you know take as simple as an arduino for example right uh you could take even something like an arduino or a beagle board or a, you know uh raspberry pi or something like that and create your own projects and it doesn't really cost so much today uh as 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 what it used to and in fact if even if you don't want to do that you there's a lot of other open source stuff that you can do uh that uh, you can try and explore you know with with those kinds of settings that you can try to do some of that right so it's only a matter of uh, you know trying at the end uh, because there's always a uh, hundred reasons that you can give to not to do something uh, but people who are you know willing to go beyond and to do something they like find something or the other that they can try and do uh, so yeah so ultimately it comes down to this uh, in fact i remember times when i had friends who even you know uh, made their own pcb designs uh, where you know they just needed uh, very simple stuff where they could do everything hands on and even the layout of the pcbs they had the etching solutions and they had everything around it to test and build their own breadboards around it and to test some of the circuitry that they built and they could even do a lot of uh, embedded coding around the microcontrollers and other things that they used around it so uh, so yeah i mean it's only a matter of uh, willingness to try and uh, uh, yeah uh, so even with that you can still work on this and today you have all of the platforms like uh, you know github and others where you can still share a lot of the code you know have uh, use a lot of the code that is open source available for you to pull up and realize uh, you know projects on your own way so they, these were things that were not really prominently used 10 years ago but today you have a lot of those kinds of things that have evolved where you can still you know you don't need to start from zero you can already pick up something that people have done and they have put it online and you can just pull up and try that and build on top of that right sir. so so it just boils down to uh, one's passion to work and yeah and it's all, exactly and it also boils down to yeah how the drive and uh, the ability to do, yeah. to do things uh, i of course you know it's very it it becomes easy if you have people you can work with but uh, you may not find people all the time who have the same passion as you do right and uh, sir in india uh, india hasn't uh, really contributed much to the global space economy so how do how do we expand india's presence in the global space industry it's a simple answer you just need to replicate what uh, the biotech industry or pharmaceutical industry or you know the it industry has done over time because um, most of uh, you know uh, the global industry runs around you having proprietary ip as in you developing investing your own money in developing a product that you can go sell around the world you know today the most uh, uh, easiest example to point to is the chinese mobile phones which are being used in india today and uh, they have the lion's market share in india with and the way the chinese companies are able to do that uh, beating every other company is by creating their own phones having their own ip around hardware and then you know providing it at at a cost and and a performance that matches the the lower cost right so and that's what uh, you know indian companies have to do as well they can uh, they have to start uh, creating these products that uh, are not just uh, you know manufactured or built for isro but really products that uh, people in other countries can use and of course you can they can take uh, control of the lower cost of operating in india 
to be able to make those uh, products competitive uh, and and then you know you you can go supply that to the rest of the world and this is what companies like bellatrix are doing today right so they are building these thrusters for example and these thrusters you know they can be used by isro or drdo they can also use be used by many other companies in the world right so um also um what is your advice to the aspiring um, space system engineers who want to carry out their career in just like you in the domain of uh, space science uh look i mean uh, i have made a lot of mistakes in my own career uh, by uh, because i did not have let's say too many people who told me what to do and uh, what not to do in that sense um and my in my experience um, it's always good to uh, you know like begin your career by uh, kind of getting some experience on board uh, especially if you are in the space domain you need to like know the community how it works how uh, and you to you need to build a mastery over some particular area uh, that uh, that you can you know have a foundation on and then you know you can go on to uh, to to master other things around it so uh, firstly getting an entry into the sector itself is very challenging so the first step is to find out where you can get an entry how you can get the entry in but once you do it's about building the credibility by building your skill set around and uh, and then you know you can always uh, mature over time because if you want to truly you know work at a system engineer level you need a substantial amount of time of uh, time and experience you need at least 15 20 years of experience to know uh, for many of the aspects uh, to 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 know how things work you should have worked in you know 10 or 15 missions by yourself in in various roles to know what happens uh, across end to end what are the challenges like so you can't simply show up saying i have uh, completed my education and today tomorrow i am a space systems engineer uh, doesn't really work uh, that way so it works it starts by uh, getting a foot in and then experiencing a few mission cycles uh, end to end and and then you know knowing what are the problems like and going through each of the problems in each mission knowing what people are facing who are colleagues in their uh, in their in their roles and then overall you know putting together this experience of 10 or 15 missions together uh, to know you know what it is like to become um, a systems level kind of a person right so it takes time so that's uh, that's the life cycle of the whole thing right sir and also in in the race that everyone is running uh, how do you think people can you know channelize what they exactly want to do because uh, as we see this time uh, it's all about gaining courses through online and various other platforms but ultimately nobody has the skill that is really required which makes um, various important positions of jobs vacant so in the field of space sciences also in india we see that a lot of important positions haven't yet been you know taken up so what do you have to say to that yeah i mean absolutely look uh, even at, at our company for example uh, we don't really care uh, about what is on somebody's cv uh, or what they have studied or what grades they have got uh, we don't really care about all or any of those uh, we care about what problems they have solved how they have solved it and what was their role what was their contribution and uh, we tend to uh, ask people what challenges have they really you know faced and solved in their own unique ways and uh, you know like um, mastering uh, some courses and examinations are uh, only good for the short term and maybe very good on paper uh, but at the end of the day uh, you know when it comes to like really stepping up to the real world it's all about uh, uh, telling people you know what you have learned by doing things uh, uh, in and doing things in a way that it uh, matters to the industry in that sense so so yeah so the best way is to uh, really get uh, hands on uh, in a way and for find people who you can work with uh, who are complementing you uh, and together you know building teams that can build out inter- very interesting you know uh, projects uh, these can all be side projects they don't need to be attached to i do understand that in india it's very challenging for students to do any kind of side projects because they're always overburdened by exams and you know grades and uh, and whatever placements and many other things around but uh, 
but if you do want to like think about the long term and you want to think about uh, you know like building a reputation for yourself as an engineer or a, or even other professions in the in the space business uh, then it's all about uh, knowing how do you like do things which are maybe small today but in a way that you are getting some of the skills that are really required in the industry right so um, i'm sure that uh, many of the people who are, who are hiring today in india as startups as well they are they are asking these questions about you know what they are definitely not asking questions about what grade you got in a particular exam they are definitely asking you questions about uh, what you know about uh, you know particular piece of equipment or you know particular piece of uh, hardware or com- or a code or whatever it is and how much you know about it in a way that uh, and also you know uh, once you've done something by yourself you know the problems that somebody could face and uh, you'll always be able to explain that in a very simplistic way uh in a way that even uh, a high school student can understand uh, the challenges that can be so yeah people who do tend to like you know uh, understand a lot of the challenges they can explain it in a very simple fashion uh and that's been my experience as well saying uh, uh and and this is where i think uh, and the other part is also how do you approach these companies because i personally get a lot of messages on linkedin by students saying i want you know a job today tomorrow in your company and everything else but uh, it's also about that it's also about honing your communication skills uh, to know to to have done your research before contacting somebody to have uh, you know like uh, to know what that company is building what is the role of the person that you are trying to approach you know how how do you see why do you see yourself as a fit to that company so doing a lot of the background research that uh, before you contact somebody because sending a linkedin message or an email or anything is very simple you know you just send and then you cross your fingers hoping that they will respond to you but if you have done a little bit more research and you show you know through your message that you would have put in some of the work uh, that is necessary we, that gives you a, a, a step ahead because people know that you have done some sort of a preparation before contacting somebody you know otherwise i always uh, say thank you very much you i don't think so you have done any research on what i what we do and uh, you don't seem to a good fit for us so uh, you know go do this work before contacting somebody else is what i tell a lot of the people who approaches and so those are you know things that um, unfortunately don't get uh, talked about in a university setting and uh, hopefully you know all of this uh, becomes a little bit more of a generational change uh for students uh in india true sir true absolutely agree with every word you said um so we truly thank you and we're so so proud to have you here with us and we truly thank you for your invaluable insights i'm sure a lot of us today have had a little bit of motivation to take our dream of uh, having an uh, having a career in the field of space sciences forward i'm sure we've learned a lot with honor to have you sir thank you so much yeah again uh, you know thank you so much uh, for the opportunity and i'm always uh, happy and keen on um, you know uh, people young people and how they uh, are how, how they could be you know in, entered into the sector and given uh, you know this sector is maturing as well i'm hoping that in the next few years we will see uh, 200 companies operate in india in the next uh, 10 years you know who are doing a lot of interesting space related missions so it's a very exciting field i think people should feel lucky that they are at a time you know at the universities when these young companies are coming up because you know if you are in some other part of the world uh, you know you might not have the same kind of opportunities that are today coming up in india right so uh, so we have a question from sautik nandi uh, mm-hmm. he says good evening so well i was just reading about nano satellites what are your views on that Yeah so nano satellites are uh, you know phenomena that has been occurring in the last 15 years actually uh, we help a lot of teams with our own company uh, who are building nano satellites the question is you know na- again you know satellites are just as i said in the beginning of my talk is uh, they are just tools so nano satellites are a culmination of uh, how you see landlines coming up then mobile phones coming up through landlines is the same thing with satellites as well today you have large satellites and small satellites and nano satellites are basically trying to use a lot of commercial electronics to have these high performance satellites that can cost very little 
Now the question is, what applications can you do out of these nano satellites? So, can you help people communicate? Can you help people, you know, image the Earth? Can you help people get better weather prediction? You know, can you help people do something else out of all of this, right? So, uh, again, you know, these are just nano satellites are just a platform. So people have to really think very carefully as to what are the interesting science or what are the interesting applications they can uh, drive through uh, to 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 use the platform to be able to do something very new. One of the very interesting missions I saw recently is trying to use a nano satellite to re-enter the uh, Earth's atmosphere to measure a lot of the dynamics around plasma or you know what happens in that heat exchange and. So many new things you know people are trying in terms of using nano satellites. So you can I create an idea bank, an idea bank of uh, what all applications and science are possible through nano satellites, and you know through that you can uh, use the platform to do either interesting science or interesting applications. Sure, sure, sure. Thank you so much. So we're really glad to have you, and we were so elated that we learned so much. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Yeah, thanks again, and uh, you know, good luck uh, with all the speakers, the other speakers that you have, and uh, you know, have, thank you again for the opportunity. Thank you, sir. Bye. Bye, sir. Thank you.